You're good. You're ready. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, what I found out was if you did all of them, yeah. one of them probably turned up on the test. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <coughs> oh, perfect. Uh, Yeah. Um, quick question on the midterm version AS for 2016, uh, yeah. number 12. Okay. When it says show that F prime looks like, is mm-hmm. that, uh, is it like, are we proving that in this one? Or? Mm, yes. Yes, we can go through that. It's not, uh, it's not super hard. Uh, do power rules. Uh, we go that way Okay. <coughs> Six o'clock, right? Six o'clock. Six o'clock, yep. Yeah. Nobody show up at eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First mate to ten. I actually had a guy show up for the final in Cal One and yeah. he walked in as the class was ending. He's like, I thought it started. She's like, Nope, it started two hours ago. He's like, What should I do? He, she goes, Retake the class. Because you just failed it. You like I can't. He, she goes like this is this is the time you were supposed to be here. You weren't here. Fair You're going to get a zero. Yeah, Sorry. So that's. Read, yeah. that's uh, no, it's I hate I hate yeah. That's just yeah. something yeah. down there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. She's like yeah. the midterm once, and it's, it's like you slept through an alarm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? You're 22 years old. I think you know how to use a clock. <laughs> but I mean, these things mess up sometimes. I don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, same here. Five not four, right? Yeah, yeah so six alarms and two different alarm clocks. Yeah, I've done that. Because you know, just in case one like it fails, you get another. Like somebody roofing me, man. Hardcore. All right, so I think we're out of old exams to go through. I think we've gone through most of those. Uh, do you have questions about things that you want to see more of? Uh, what subject are you weak on? And we'll talk about that. Okay. Let's take a look. Integral convergence of this guy. Now, is this k minus 4 to the k, or is this k times negative 4 to the k? Okay, yeah, cool. We can do this. Now, did they do this with uh, root test or with ratio test? Wait, which one? So negative 1 to the k, x minus 2 to the k, over k, so 4 to the k. I did a ratio test on that one. Yeah, I would do ratio tests on all of them. Uh, I did do root test on some of them in Pearson, but uh, I don't... If you do ratio test on the same ones, it will give you the same answer, uh, and usually quicker. So, <coughs> I would set up ratio test if I've got um, AK, that is negative 1 to the K, of X minus 2 to the K, K times 4 to the K. Unfortunately, my K's look like 4's, I'm sorry about that. Um, AK plus 1 is going to be negative 1 to the K plus 1. X minus 2 to the K plus 1. Over K plus 1. 4 to the K plus 1. Okay. Absolute value. So if I look at the absolute value of AK plus 1 over AK, um, absolute value means the negative ones don't matter. 
Uh, so what I've got is x minus 2 to the k plus 1 over x minus 2 to the k. What else do I have? I'm going to have a 4 to the k plus 1 on the bottom and a 4 to the k on top. I'm going to have a k plus 1 on the bottom and the k on top. Correct? Okay. So <coughs> I'm going to do this as absolute value of x minus 2 uh, times what else do I have left here? Okay. You got a 4. There's a 4 on the bottom. And then also, I've got a k over k plus 1, right? That goes to 1. Right? Yeah. So if I look at the limit as k goes to infinity of absolute value of 8k plus 1 over 8k, that's going to give me the limit as k goes to infinity of absolute value of x minus 2 over 4 times k over k plus 1. Essentially, this part has nothing to do with the limit, right? <laughs> so k over k plus 1 goes to 1. So this is just absolute value of x minus 2 over 4. Okay, so I know I need this to be less than 1 to converge. So that tells me absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 4. And negative 4. Which means x minus 2 is between negative 4 and 4, right? <laughs> so if I add 2 on all three of these... I get 6 and negative 2. That's what my interval looks like. So the other part of this question is we got to check the endpoints, right? So let's see what happens at each endpoint. equals negative 2. <coughs> what my series looks like is negative 1 to the k times negative 4 to the k over k times 4 to the k. This goes from 1 to infinity. So what happens with the two things on the top? They just become 1. Yeah, you see where your, um, your, your negatives cancel out? So I got an even number of negatives, that doesn't matter. So what I've got is really just 4 to the k over 4 to the k. What series is this? One over the k. Harmonic series. It is a harmonic series. So this diverges uh, because it's the harmonic series. Okay. So let's plug in x equals 6. to the k. Uh, 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 to the k. And then this is k times 4 to the k. So wait a minute. x equals negative 2. How can you make both of them positive? Uh, because they were both negative. So if I do negative 1 to the k times negative 4 to the k, do you see where that is? Negative 1 to the 2k times 4 to the k? But what's negative 1 to an even power? Yeah. Yeah, so that term just drops out in that case. <coughs> you see where that doesn't happen here? Mm -hmm. Right? These two just cancel. And now, okay, so this is something you can look for. Anytime you're doing one of these interval of convergence questions, do you notice that you always get two versions of the same series? Mm -hmm. You get the positive one and you get the alternate one, right? They might occur at different endpoints. They might be switched like they are in this one. Uh, but they should look very much the same. If they don't, look for a mistake in your work, right? Because that's, that should be happening. <coughs> so, of course, this converges because it's the, uh, the alternating harmonic series. All right, so what does that mean our, um, our interval of convergence is? Yep. Negative 2 to 6, but with a parenthesis and a negative 2 and a bracket on the 6. Uh, because it works on that end, but not on the other end. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. 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 So the length of this interval is 8, right? So your radius of convergence has got to be 4. It's half of the distance here. Okay, yeah. The, if you do this with root test, try it. I'm just curious. I think what you get is k root of k or something like that. Uh, and I believe that goes to 1. So you can assume that uh, the k root of k goes to 1. <coughs> the equivalent is you can assume that k over k plus 1 goes to 1. Yeah, both of those are, are true. So it's, uh, but yeah, root test tends to give you uglier limits. That's the thing I don't like about it. series with an interval of conversion. Okay, now this is a good question. This is from what, 15? No, 16, okay. Which problem are you doing? Uh, it's uh, problem 12 from uh, the spring 2016. Thing. differentiate a power, uh, power series. Remember a power series looks like a giant polynomial, right? So what's the only variable in here that I'm differentiating? X, right? Because n squared, n plus 1, 2 to the n, all those are constants, right? Mm -hmm. So f prime is going to be, I can just pull out the constant here, 1 over n squared, n plus 1, 2 to the n. What's the derivative of x to a power? N plus 1. Yeah, you bring your power down. I got n plus 1, and then I got x to the next power lower than that. Right? So it's going to be n plus 1 times x to the n. Um, let's see. First power here was x squared, so that doesn't change the numbering. All right. Uh, is there anything you can see to cancel here? Yeah, n plus 1 is going to cancel. So what I've got is actually just x to the n over n squared times 2 to the n. Okay. So the next question is, and I think that's what it said to verify that it was equal to. It's just coming out of power rule. The, uh, the next question was the, the interval of convergence of this guy. So what do we know about uh, differentiating and integrating a power series? How, how does that affect the uh, interval of convergence? Yeah. Right. It doesn't change the radius, so it doesn't change the, the base of what we're looking at here, but it might change what it does at the endpoints. So we know the radius is the same. Uh, so it's got to be uh, 2, right? Center at 0. Uh, it might change at the endpoint, so really we just need to check the behavior of f prime at 2 and negative 2, right? Because we need to see what happens at the endpoints. So, all right, at uh, x equals 2, 
f prime of 2 is the sum of 2 to the n over n squared times 2 to the n. All right, that simplifies to the sum of 1 over n squared. That converge or diverge? Converge. Converges because it's a p-series. Okay. Uh, what about f prime of negative 2? Well, it's negative 2 to the m over n squared times 2 to the m, which is, let's see, just negative 1 to the m over n squared, so it's the alternating version of that. <coughs> And that actually converges absolutely, so it converges. All right. So, what does that mean? Your integral of convergence is for this particular uh, derivative. Yeah, it's the same. It's negative two to the two. We put brackets on both ends, uh, just because uh, it, it works at both ends. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Why is the only computer to do for the numerator? Uh, just for x. That's the only way place the x is. Okay. Yeah, remember, n's a constant, right? Because when you write this out term for term, what you've got is x squared over 1 times 2 times 2 plus x cubed over 4 times 3 times 4. You see what I mean? Denominators are always going to be numbers for every term. All right. Do you have one? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was just going to... Okay. Yeah, okay. A ball is dropped from a height of 15 feet. Each time the ball bounces, it rises and falls two thirds of the distance it's previously fallen. Okay. I spot the eye. I was like, what? Who's this? Okay. The ball is dropped. <laughs> 15 feet. Each time it bounces, it rises. distance traveled by the ball. That's a good question. <laughs> so, all right, so now a lot of people see this. The main thing against you in this question is panic, right? What does a ball do when you drop it? It goes down. It's coming back up to two-thirds of the height. What's it gonna and it goes down again? What's it gonna do next time? Come up to two thirds of that height, come down again. Two thirds, come down. Two thirds, come down. Okay. So let's see what these heights are, right? This is 15. Two thirds of 15 is what? 10 and then 10. And then this is gonna be each one of these is gonna be two thirds of 10. Each one of these is going to be two-thirds of two-thirds of ten. What kind of series am I getting from adding these up? That's going to be a geometric series, right? Because every time, how do I get from one term to the next? I multiply it by two-thirds, right? So the total distance is 15 plus, it looks like, 2 times 10 plus 2 times two-thirds times 10 plus 2 times 2 thirds squared times 10 plus 2 times 2 thirds cubed times 10 and so on. Okay, so this is almost a geometric series. You notice the 15 is the only one that doesn't get uh, repeated, right? Because I'm not throwing this upward from the ground, it's just dropping from a height of 15 feet. So I would say just like add this on last, right? Because it's this stuff that's geometric, right? 
So I got 15 plus. How do you find the sum of a geometric series? Factor out the first term, which looks like a 20. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then what I have left is 1 plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds squared plus 2 thirds cubed, and so on. All right. I guess we should mention that this does converge uh, because uh, 2 thirds is less than 1. Right, that's or, yeah, that's helpful, right? Um, and also because this is how uh, physics works, right? If we had something where it was four thirds, what would that mean? This ball was doing yeah. bouncing higher and higher every <laughs> time. The laws it would of actually physics. be traveling an infinite amount of space. Yeah. yeah, but that yeah, real balls don't do that. So the uh, this is going to converge. This is fifteen plus twenty times one over one minus two thirds. Let's see what that is. This is 15 plus 20 times, I multiply the top and the bottom by 3, I get 3 over 3 minus 2. So uh, 20 times 3, so 60 plus 15 is 75. Is that one of the answers? Okay. <clears throat> so not too bad. Again, when you're not sure what to do about this, especially because of the physical situation, what's the best way to do it? Draw a picture. Look at what's happening. Right? Like I say, a lot of people call that a curveball question because it's different than things that you've seen. But you can figure it out and using the tools that you know how to, how to use. Right? And that's the whole point. So they may throw something at you like that. It's all right. <clears throat> what else we got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, find another bound for the remainder in terms of n. Yeah. Okay. The um, is it if we uh, if we add on uh, up to to n of them, if we truncate it by the the series up to n. Yeah, I think so. So I think you're more likely to see a like a fixed remainder. Like suppose we truncate it and add up the first twenty terms. Uh, find a bound on the remainder for that. So, what is it, 1 over n to the 6? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, 